MathCAD Prime 10.0 is now available, and one of the best enhancements in this version are the advanced input controls. If you go to the Input Output tab and then to the Advanced dropdown, you can now create list boxes, check boxes, text boxes, radio buttons, sliders, and buttons. If you use MathCAD 15 or earlier, you might remember these as the web controls. Now be aware the combo box is now available from the basic dropdown list. In this video, I'm going to show two of the controls, radio buttons and list boxes. And I'm going to use an example from a webcast I did for PTC last year. It was called MathCAD for Mechanical Engineers. I highly recommend that you check it out over on the MathCAD YouTube channel. But anyhow, one of the examples that I gave were the calculations for a spline coupling. This is the worksheet from that video. And I'm gonna scroll down. One of the things that you do when you are calculating spline couplings and the forces and the different dimensions is that you have these different factors like the fatigue life factor and the application factor and the load distribution factors. I'm going to show how we can have the fatigue life factors selected by using these different input controls. In the webcast, I just signed these manually, but here we can have the user select them. And that's one of the things that I really love about the advanced input controls. They turn your MathCAD worksheets into real tools that people can use for their engineering work. Okay, so let me take some of this stuff and I'm gonna copy it over to a different worksheet. Let me select it and then I will use Control C. I'm just doing it on a separate worksheet just so that I have some more space in here and I don't have to rearrange the different entities on the previous worksheet. So anyhow, on the new worksheet, I'm now going to use Control V to paste these different factors in here and in the webcast, I used a table because the table looks good, but I actually need a matrix for selecting my life factor. So first off, I am going to set my origin variable to one. By default, origin is equal to zero. We can check that by typing in origin and then equals. Well, for the purposes that I will show, I need the origin to be a value of one. So let's take origin and then I will set that to a value of one. So anyhow, when you have a table, the different columns in the table are actually vectors. So for example, if I take cycles and then hit the equal sign, well, there you can see the number of cycles, but I wanna take each of these, or actually the two right vectors and turn them into a matrix. So let me just select this and delete it because I actually do not need it. I'm going to create a vector and I'm gonna call it life factor. So let me type in life underscore factor. And then I will use the colon key on the keyboard for the definition operator. And actually before I do that, I realize that I need to add in the matrix column operator. So let me move back over here and I'll go to the matrices tables tab and then vector matrix operations. And here we have the matrix column operator. The keyboard shortcut is control shift C. So let me type that. And I want the first column in this new matrix to be the values from unidirectional. So let me type in unidirectional, make sure I spell it correctly. So that is good. Now let's take the column called reverse and we'll make it the second column in this vector. So let me type in life underscore factor and let's go to vector matrix operations and I will use the column operator and I want the second column to be equal to and let me move my cursor over oops actually hit it too many times let me move over and then I will go to the math tab and go to the operators drop down list if you are not sure what the definition operator is hey here it is and again the keyboard shortcut is the colon key and this is going to be equal to the vector called reversed 
So that is good. And just to confirm it, I will type in life factor. And that is going to be equal to, and you can see that's the values from the unidirectional column and the reverse column. You'll notice that over here we have life factor highlighted in green. And if I select it, it says, hey, this expression redefines a previously defined matrix. But that is okay. So now I am going to use my advanced input controls to select the appropriate value from this matrix. And the first one that I am going to do is to have the user choose between unidirectional or reversed. So let me type in the name of a variable. I will call it type to be simple. And then I'll use the colon key for the definition operator. Let's go to the input output tab. And then I will go to advanced. And this is going to be a radio button. And when I click on that, you automatically get three different choices, one, two, or three. And if you want to edit this, well, you can click on it and then right click and then choose edit. And we can see that here is the script. Now there's a drop down list where you can write the script in JScript or VB script, but you might want to stick to JScript because Microsoft has indicated that VB script is going to be, or Visual Basic script, I believe it is, uh, is going to be deprecated sometime in the future. And so you can change the values directly in here. So for example, maybe I want the first one to be unidirectional. So let me type in unidirectional so I can do it that way. But what is easier for a radio button is using the properties tab. And so let me hit the apply button over here. Let me go to the properties tab. So there I have unidirectional. And then for this one, let me change this one to be reversed. And then here we have the third choice over there. Well, I don't want a third choice. I can go back here and delete this line out of the script. I could have also just deleted the text out of the, uh, field for the properties tab over here. But anyhow, let's go back to the script and our turn hit apply. And let's go back to the properties tab. And instead of the list being vertical, I want it to be horizontal. You can also have the text on the left side of the radio button instead, but I'm happy with it on the right side. So let's close out of here. Let's grab this and make it a little bit wider. Oops, I still have that third choice in there. Let's go here and then edit and Let's go to the properties tab and delete this out of here and then close out of there. And that way we got rid of it. Okay. Anyhow, let me resize this over here and make it a little bit narrower. And right now it is showing the name of my variable for type. And you can choose to hide the left side or collapse the left side. And at first, these might seem to be very similar to one another. I actually prefer collapsing the left side because what this will do is if I click on here or click on it, uh, right now it is just hiding this, but it's not changing the alignment of the box. If you collapse the left side, it will both hide the variable as well as align the box to the left. That just helps when you're trying to line stuff up later on. I will show that in a moment. And be aware you can choose either hide or collapse. You can't select both of them. So there we have it. It is now aligned to the left. That is good. Let me scroll down a little bit and grab this. Oops. And I'm just going to move it over here a little bit. And I can, and I, I mentioned that I want this to be like a functional sheet for doing engineering. So I can put in some text here to tell people to select the type of loading. So let me type in choose. Oh yeah, one thing that they added a couple versions ago, I think, in MathCAD, if you start typing in text and then use a space, it is automatically going to convert that from a math region to a text box, which is nice. Okay, so let's choose type of loading. So that is good for that one. And then I'm going to have the user choose the number of cycles. So choose number of cycles. 
So that is good for my second text box. And now we're going to make a, another advanced control. And this is going to be a list for people to choose the number of cycles. And so I'm going to enter in the name of my variable number, and then I can use the definition operator. Let me go to operators from the math tab and definition. And then let's go to the input output tab. Let's go to advanced. And I'm going to make a list box and the default values are one, two, and three. So let's right click and choose edit. Actually, before I show edit, you see these two different things here, add inputs and remove inputs. By default, these advanced controls have no inputs, but if you add an input, it'll give an area up here where you can send the value of a variable or you can send a variable to the advanced control if you want to script it. I'll show this in a later video. Uh, this is so you can have really advanced control. So you can have the values in one advanced input control depend on the values of some other variable or some other advanced input. So for example, I could have different values in here based on whether the cho user chooses unique directional and reverse. And so this can be used for things where you have the user select a material and then after they select a material like aluminum steel titanium whatever then it will allow the user to select a grade of material but anyhow i don't need any uh inputs in here so let me right click and then choose remove inputs and then let's right click and choose edit and for this one if you go to the properties tab well they're just two choices in here you can sort or write aligned text i'm going to align the text to the right for entering the different values i need to do that in here so let's type in it'll be 1000 and then let's do 10,000. so one one two three four and then let's put in 10 to the fifth so let me delete this and one one, two, three, four, five. Okay, for additional choices, well, I'm going to have to copy and paste. So let's grab this and I will do Control C and let me position my cursor here and Control V and hit the Enter key. And let's add in a, another zero to this one. And let me go to a, another blank line and Control V let's add in two zeros to this one and i will choose the apply button so you can see how it has updated the information there let's close out of this and let me grab this and make it a little bit longer and like before i am going to collapse the left side and so that way i can have these two lined up with one another so that's what i think is a little bit of a benefit of using collapse instead of hide so anyhow i have this and this is great and i want the user to be able to see this at the same time i'm going to actually hide this information with an area so let me select a location on the sheet here and I'll go to the document tab. Let's insert an area. And then I'm going to grab, oops, didn't mean to move that. Let me grab all this stuff and I will do control X and then control V and then collapse the area just so that I can have this information right by the table. So you can see how the selections are going to be aligned with the choices in this table up here. So anyhow, if you want to see what this results in, uh, this one, what did I call that type? I think I called it type, type equals two. So this choice would be the value one, this would be the value two. And let me see what we got for the value of number and I'll choose equal one. Hey, if I choose this one, the value is two, the value is three, the value is four, the value is five. So let's leave uh, with, what is this? 100,000 cycles and reversed in here. And so now I can have the value of life factor selected from this matrix over here. Let me collapse that area again. I'll create my variable. I will call it L. 
and then I will use a subscript. If you go to the math tab, here we have the subscript choice. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of control and the minus key. So L sub F, and then I will use the definition operator, operators, definition and evaluation. This is going to be equal to, and I'm going to extract a value from that life factor matrix that I hid in the collapsed area. So let's type in life underscore factor. And I am going to go to the matrices tables tab. Here is vector matrix operation. And the third one down here, this is the matrix index operator. And so the first uh, thing that I'm going to extract, let's get the number and then comma, type, and then let's evaluate this inline equals 0 0.4. Okay, so let's confirm that. If I am reversed and I am 10 to the 5 number of cycles, yep, it's a value of 0 0.4. Let's see what happens if I change to unidirectional. Hey, the value updates to 0 0.5. Let's go back to reversed and let's do 10 to the 7 cycles. Well, now it's going to be a value of 0 0.2. Choose this one, 0 0.3. Oh, let's just do 1,000, and it is 1.8. So this is pretty neat in here, how you can use these different advanced controls in order to drive different variables in your MathCAD worksheet to update subsequent calculations. So I will be doing more videos on these advanced input controls and some of the other enhancements in MathCAD Prime 10.0.